Ubuntu 1710 Beta 2 goes full Wayland. Microsoft really, really wants to help. We are the 4.83%. And Linux gets a new digital painting tool. It's kind of awesome. Speaking of that, it's a great day for Linux, everyone. Let's go. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, take that midweek break to cover all the fun things that we find going on in the world of open source or basically anything that ticks with an internal penguin. I don't know. Is that the wrong way of saying it? Uh, no, no, no. We will cover Linux projects uh, that are not open source, namely uh, some drivers, which we will get to at some point. Yeah, that's kind of fun, man. What have you been up to, man? It's uh, another week. Uh, another week, another very productive week at work. I'm... Let's see, I've been there for a month and three weeks, give or take. So I'm mostly starting to get my bearings now. I know what to do without having to ask. Everyone's like, what do I do with this now? So, oh, all I'm hearing yeah, is that I you've very like, really good now. at making coffee for your boss. Uh, well, they also make coffee for me. Uh, it's mm -hmm. whomever is going to get coffee just asks everyone else, do you want coffee? All right, coffee for everyone then. Hey, coffee for everyone. That's a good system. It yeah. is. Yeah, man. Um, I, I, I guess I kind of hit it at it. I've been playing around with Blender, get that installed, get it working with the GPU compute with the NVIDIAs and the CUDAs, mm -hmm. utilizing a 980 and a 770. I'm going to make a quick how-to because, man, there is not a good singular guide on the interwebs. Not, oh. not from the Googles for that. And it's so simple. You can do it. I got it down to four commands because I'm lazy. Keep a lookout for that later this week. But let's get right into the business of um 1710 beta 2 it's out and what is new pedro i mean is it going to julianne fries <laughs> well uh not much is new it is uh still very much using the well it will be the first version to feature gnome obviously uh but uh beta 2 if you're just getting the regular uh ubuntu flavor you also get Wayland, if you installed it from um, from a fresh ISO, uh, if you are or if you've already been using the betas like I have uh, on the uh, ThinkPad, uh, you will get a, a big update and it will come with all the Wayland stuff that all gets a nice boost and it gets installed, which is actually really really awesome. But yeah, mostly you won't notice anything. Um, it's just, oh, yeah, they're showing window snapping there. I don't know, man. Even, <laughs> that looks kind of, kind of sexy. <laughs> Even XFCE has window snapping nowadays, so <laughs> that's nothing new. But, yeah, they also have a new login and lock screen, which I'm guessing since everyone nowadays seems to be using that old Unity greeter style thing for a light DM, they figured they had to do something different with GDM3. Yes, they are going back to full-on GDM. Which makes sense since they're using GNOME. Yeah, That's I mean, it definitely expected. does. I mean, they're rocking out with that global menu HUD. Um, do we, I, I know being a beta, launching with Wayland by default and, and this article from Omnic Kumbuntu and all that business, but saying you're not going to notice anything, I was like, unless you're a gamer, um, <laughs> you probably will notice some things. But yeah, it does have uh, X by default still in that business. Um, Kind of, it, honestly, if, if I'm going to be honest with you, I'm more excited to see what the fallout is. <laughs> well, there probably won't be a lot because even with Unity 8, when Unity 8 came out, uh, it was broken. It didn't work for a lot of people. Mirror didn't perform anywhere near as well as Canonical had expected. And, well, we got to see the fallout from that. That project we died did. um, as in Unity. <laughs> I'm genuinely curious to see what their GNOME re-implementation, their Unity skin pack on top of GNOME looks like. I, I kind of want to play with that because I want to play with everything. And I'm always curious to see how does it handle four monitors? <laughs> with different X sessions for each and every single one Which of them. Which should theoretically make it easier. It should, yeah. Should. That's kind of the point of GNOME with having removed all of the control from the user. Yeah. Mm. I, I don't know. Um, good luck. I'm not going to try it out. I'm waiting for, what's our next? Uh, 1804 is our LTS coming yeah, up? Yeah, LTS, 1804. 
that'll be the next business on this particular box of business. But uh, something that we've definitely had a hate-hate relationship with this show, oh, and more, more importantly, uh, Linux Scheme Cast Weekly for the past five years is Skype. And they they keep on trying, little buddy. They do, mm -hmm. and they have the a, a new preview of the next generation of electron wrapped. Nope, I mean Skype for Linux is that, that, <laughs> that's their code name for it because you know calling it what it is is probably not the best idea. Um, this is going to bring your screen sharing, group chat, and air quotes cloud technology. Which yeah. Uh, Come on, Microsoft, you, you lot have been trying to make this Electron Skype workable for like over a year now. Oh, and yeah, and they've been pushing it not just on Linux. Uh, they actually pushed this particular version out to Mac and Windows back in August. Well, uh, when you say that, it's not the one utilizing web technology. It's not um, basically running Chromium. Yeah. Yeah, for your <laughs> This Skype is the, the new improved quote-unquote version. And the general consensus seems to be that everyone hates it. It's, uh, I, I guess it's business as usual when it comes to Skype ever since Microsoft bought it. So nothing new there, but hey, you can actually download it. The uh, I put in the notes that the original link was dead. And during this week, whenever I tried to open that link on my end, I would just get redirected to uh, Microsoft.com. So I guess they fixed whatever was going on with their UK mirror. But yeah, it's there. Uh, you can also find the um, direct link if you Google for it. If for some reason you really want to try it. I started it, looked at it, said, that's a whole lot of fancy nope. Technically, nope. yes, it is. <laughs> and listen, man, I, I still maintain that this isn't the entire new Skype. That the entire project is only staffed with dislike interns at Microsoft. That, that's the entirety <laughs> you get of the to team work on Skype. That it, that's working on it. I mean, seriously, you could do this right. And I don't like how people are using Electron in lieu of native apps, but you have things like we're currently using Discord right now for Patreons. It has an audio thing. We have our live audio going out over that. You can do it right. It works and it's a good thing. And their audio quality just on Discord, a small startup, rivals the old version of Skype that we're using right now, also known yeah. as the one that works. I think the big takeaway from this version is it adds all the new features that Windows and Mac users have hated for the past few months because Microsoft is dead set on attempting to make Skype a social network. Uh, it's trying to make it a Slack type thing, and it nobody uses it for that, and they won't, Microsoft. I know you're not listening, but if you were, just saved you a lot of time. Yeah, and it's very clear that Microsoft is desperately clamoring for the days of MSN Messenger and how popular it was. Oh, Instead, Microsoft, let it go. Microsoft's clamoring from the days of they just do whatever we want. You're stuck with it because there's no option. We're Microsoft. Peace. <laughs> and um, Microsoft. But hey, they really, yeah. really want to help. They definitely do want to help, man. Um, open source initiative, uh, OSI, you might know it. Microsoft is now a premium sponsor. So I think we can officially forgive them for allying with SCO and buying a Unix license back in 06 at no one ever. Um, they have done uh, some less Microsoft-y things in the past. Like they've released .NET in 2014, and then more recently Visual Studio Code and TypeScript. But... Yeah, they're basically, I, I don't know, the, this reminds me of, uh, what, what do they call it in the Catholic Church, when, when tithing, when you try to make up for your sins? Oh, yeah, you pay to right. be forgiven for your sins? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> get, get out of Tartarus. Yeah, no, going. see, uh, Microsoft, if I'm not mistaken, there's still uh, an ongoing legal case uh, regarding patents that Microsoft holds, and they're trying to enforce it against Linux. I think it has something to do with file systems. I may be mistaken, but if I if I am, let me know. But if I'm not, that is still very much a thing. So they need to openly come out and say, look, we get it. No one likes FAT32. Microsoft themselves don't like FAT32. It so, could be a thing, man. But I, I've always, not always, but I'd say in the past two years maintained that under Satya Devella, there's 
there, there, there's a part of Microsoft that doesn't want to be jerks for lack, not for lack of a better word, but this shows family friendly. Trust uh, me. That's called the marketing department. No, and no, it's not the marketing Steve department. Ballmer, no, no. After Steve Ballmer, the marketing mm. department is, oh God, we need to get back some of that uh, goodwill that we lost. I don't, so. I think they're marketing departments too inept for that, Pedro. I, don't, <laughs> I think they're, they're too stupid for that. The marketing department likes glue sticks. They're too busy sniffing glue in order to do that. But the, there's a segment of Microsoft that's like, oh, look, they're doing good. But there's so much entrenched, just old school Microsoft DNA. It's like, uh, hey, guys, it's been uh, you know, a few months since we did anything smitey or uh, stupid. It was like on uh, it, do boss. Do you feel like and, paying five hundred and something pounds or whatever it is in dollars for an Office three six five license a year? Well, it's the not even things like least. that. You, you see some of their open source. I mean, they've contributed a ton of stuff to GitHub, uh, but then you see things like we are forcing Windows ten updates, no matter what you say, or we're forcing forcing upgrades to windows 10 and you can't stop us and sneakily downloading it in the background even if you said no which means that those people on metered bandwidth got hit with a very significant internet bill yeah. thanks for that microsoft it's a thing but hey man they're contributing money to osi so uh sometimes you gotta make deals with the devil you know and you know i just can't really technically come with any strings so yeah, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, one company that's we'll always see. been really good to Linux, but they, there's definitely a vocal <laughs> minority, a small minority, um, which I, I understand. I understand your point about them not um, opening their technology as uh, NVIDIA. And they have a new driver oh. out that has fixed a few things uh, for me. Quite a few things. I mean, NVIDIA has always been a bit sparse with their change log. Well, until this they get not... something. I mean, this is a beta driver. This is 387.12. They've rolled out. The two big things, well, A, they've fixed some G-Sync issues if you're lucky enough to uh, have a G-Sync mm -hmm. monitor. <laughs> to afford that right. kind of monitor, yes. Okay, uh, uh, if you went out and bought a G, not like you got lucky and you had a scratch off and it was like a $3 <laughs> yeah. ticket. And you're like, oh, no, it's a G-Sync monitor. No, let's face it, that probably never happened. If it did, call me. I want to know where to buy that ticket. Um, for me... My UHD monitor that I use for our source input here is DisplayPort because that's how you're going to get 60 frames a second at 3840 by 2160. Unless you have HDMI 2.0, which admittedly not a whole lot of GPUs do. No, you, you think dealing with DisplayPort under Linux is dodgy enough. Um, <laughs> anyway, well, a big issue. This is str strange because I have this. Our, our co-host on the Saturday show, Jordan, has the same monitor and um, empty who's also in general has also been a co-host and helped us out has the same monitor too and we've definitely outside of it the the siren going off which if you've listened to our shows <laughs> at the amount of time you know about the, the monitor siren at this point we all go who we were playing left for dead left for brad is a series we do for patrons where we're playing through the entirety of left for dead um if go back and listen because it was Pedro, Jordan, not, uh, not Pedro, it was Jordan, Empty, and myself, and the siren went off, and we're like, whose is it? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't cause us to blink, but um, one of the issues with DisplayPort was resuming from suspend, and supposedly this sorts it 100%, and we don't have to worry about it anymore. I've not had a problem with it for a while. The actual DisplayPort... You know, I had a bad, dis oh man, if you get a bad display port cable, it will cause all types of weird nightmare things in your system. I don't care what operating says, the way display port works, I ended up buying a display port to mini display port and that fixed everything with this monitor. Uh, is there anything else in the drivers that... Uh, nothing much. They fixed the Vulcan. a few... Yeah, alt tabbing uh, with the Vulcan, which I, I'm not brave enough to alt tab Vulcan <laughs> stuff at this point. <laughs> I honestly don't remember ever alt having something Vulcan, but I've never really had any issues with Vulcan stuff outside of the uh, black textures uh, in Sirius Sam and the black screen that you'd get if you started Sirius Sam in Vulcan mode. Mm -hmm. But then it, if you did that weird uh, workaround of starting it in OpenGL, then changing to Vulcan once the game was running, that worked fine. 
I don't know what was up with that, but hey, Pro Team fixed that. Apparently, it wasn't exactly a driver issue; it was just an implementation issue. So that's fair. No, they also added support uh, for YUV 4.2.0 compression on monitors connected through DisplayPort. Uh, admittedly, on my end, I only have uh, this monitor connected to DisplayPort, and it's using an adapter to HDMI because these monitors, 1080p monitors, they only have HDMI and VGA ports. Go <laughs> figure. <laughs> I uh, yeah. installed it. I mean, I'm running it right now and I haven't seen any issues again the wake from sleep hasn't been an issue with this monitor for a while um it, it was a huge thing we had our own janked up work around to get it to wake up <laughs> so yep, good on nvidia um yeah there were a couple of people uh reporting issues in the nvidia dev talk forums uh let's see they some were not being able to see the power output. If you use NVIDIA SMI, you know that there's a power output option there. Uh, that wasn't working for some people. The, uh, there was someone else with an Optimus laptop that using an external monitor was getting some weird, weird glitches uh, on the external monitor only. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's something to lo look out for. But yeah, I'm running it too right now and I haven't really had any issues. Good on that. Let's uh, okay. Let's, so let's uh, Gmail went to the terminal. <laughs> Gmail from the command line with mod. Now this has Mac OS, which come on, you, you can make it work because you got to install all the Linux stuff oh, yeah. in here, <laughs> and it, it's definitely a thing. Uh, for me, that this just falls into the stupid but neat section. It kind of came a little early this week, didn't it? And mm -hmm. yeah, this is basically getting everything set up, you know, just to brew, install MUT, firing up, plugging in your credentials, you know, it's just IMAP access. And I was like, do we really need to write an article about this to do it? Uh, but it, it works. I tried it and um, oh, okay. I couldn't really come up with a use case for this because I kind of felt like this was reinventing the wheel because I have definitely, unless they've changed anything, I have set up Gmail with Alpine and it took like all of two, possibly seven seconds. Yeah, it, it doesn't really take all that long. Most email clients nowadays will just, oh, that's a Gmail account, right? Here's the SMTP. Here's the um, the other one. Yeah, I couldn't, couldn't necessarily <laughs> see any different this was doing outside of that and you know if i'm going to be accessing gmail from the command line a something has went horribly wrong uh, <laughs> everything else in the house is broken oh god <laughs> exactly right <laughs> it's not like the bad old days when that your computer hole was the only thing you had you, you were just out you, you didn't have a backup and um I forgot my trade of thought. I just, oh, right, right, right. I mean, listen, man, I, if you own a fixie and you're currently drinking your PBR, and yeah, all right, maybe this is your thing. But it shouldn't be because um, when I brought up that, I, I thought to myself, how about we tell the beautiful people a tool that's actually usable? Yeah, and does a whole lot more than just Gmail. What are you trying to say? But wait, there's more. Oh, yes. A lot more. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're talking about is Googler 3.4. This is a useful piece of kit, especially. Oh, yeah. <laughs> especially. I mean, this project will save your legitimate sanity or what you have remaining of it. If you do it with a bunch of headless boxes, this says Google search, Google site search, Google news, all from the terminal. Because have you ever tried to use Google anything with links? Guess what? Don't. Use this. <laughs> this will make you your life. You can, in theory? Oh, you can. You know what? I can, <laughs> can go play in traffic. Doesn't mean it's necessarily <laughs> a good idea. And you don't have to really install anything crazy or wild to make this work. I think this is just good safety net procedures to have on any boxes that you don't want to be sitting there typing you know, oh, let's get links installed. So I'm okay. <laughs> that moment you're stuck with just a TTY, any uh, AMD user on Linux that used or tried to use an AMD GPU from like 2005 to 
2014 knows exactly what I'm talking about. Because every now and again, whenever there was an update for the drivers, and they were few and far between, but every now and again, you would reboot to a black screen of death and you could not get an X session going at all. So all you had was a TTY. And all you had was that one laptop that you needed for university the next day. So, yeah, you were committed. Well, I mean, there's also things to be said. I mean, if you have a borked video driver, you're playing with X or Config or anything like that. You know, Control Alt F1. I mean, using your virtual terminals right there. I mean, you, yeah, when you were stuck with the TTY. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's definitely a thing. So, 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 we got to talk about this because the internet <laughs> lost its collective mind. I shouldn't say the internet. I should say our Linux did. And it's like, the future's here, people. Future's <laughs> here. What happened? And um, tell them about it. Yeah, so uh, there were plenty of numbers floating around this week. Uh, the first one was, oh, Linux is the 6.91%. Uh, no, that's way too high. Oh, Linux is the 4.83%. Okay, that seems more reasonable, but still way too high. Okay, fine. Linux is the 3.04%. Alrighty then. Okay, so yeah, they've uh, net market share. Every now and again, they will push out um, like a little notification to everyone who keeps... Um, there, there's your problem right there. A thread on Linux yeah. or Linux <laughs> masteries. Ooh, yeah, not, not, not a place you want to go for the hard-hitting facts or reality no. checks. No, uh, but yeah, there was like a big thing going on with Linux getting some massive market shares higher than Mac uh, when they got the 6.91%. And then they looked at it again. It's like, oh, it's 4.83. And now they've looked at it again. And if you go to net market share, you will see the September 2017 results are actually 3.04%. But those numbers came from somewhere. And yeah, the, those weren't the correct numbers because yeah, there's a lot of people trying Linux. There's a lot of people going to university or getting Chromebooks. And getting their first experience with Linux, and then oh, their little, you. tiny little brains. You're robbing my bit from the show notes. I like it. Can <laughs> continue. Uh, just that one bit. Uh, but yeah, they can't really deal with that in their tiny little brains, and they end up going back to Windows. But if, if come the end of October and these numbers hold up, like even if it's just 3%, Linux will have come very close to Windows 8 and it's quickly, well, not too quickly now since it's actually dropped since uh, August, but it is still very much encroaching on that Mac um, market share. That's good. It is. I mean, at the end of the day, though, um, yeah, just that bit from your show notes, you like the, the thing I wrote. Yeah, got it. <laughs> just the first again. line. You can't help yourself. Don't worry. It's, it's genetic. Um, it's back to school Chromebooks. That's all it is. I mean, they're cheap. We're done here, people. Hit the lights on your way out. That there is your spike right there. As soon as I read that, it's like, yep, yep. If you're going back to university, you go back. To, you, you're not going to buy your kid. All right, listen. Some people are going to be like, no, dad. I need you got a two thousand dollar Facebook machine, the Alienware, yes. um, you know, <laughs> a razor. That, that's exactly. It. If you fall for that, you, hey man, maybe you just want to get your kids something nice. I, I'm definitely down with that. Or if you think you need that, I hope um, I, I would never be your like flatmate or in dorm with that thing running, zzz, you know, and the fans blowing out of it. But no, Chromebooks, hundred percent, explain the spike. Um, I know we were theorizing about it maybe a week or two ago. It's like maybe IoT devices, but yeah, I don't know, man. Well, there was there's always going to be a spike in those, especially in those early days of university that everyone gets their first exposure to Linux and everyone goes, "Oh, okay, let's try this Linux thing on my uh, whatever," and they try it for a little bit. Satan, mm, no, I think too I'm complicated. <laughs> well, we see numbers like that. It's like something we've always definitely been facing. With Linux adoption, is it's hard to get it pre-installed. With the Chromebook, yeah. that solved, and Google just released, I believe, three new pixels. Oh yeah, or <laughs> Chrome, whatever they're calling them now, like three different versions with i5s and i7s and all that fun stuff. That was at the Google talk they gave this morning. That unfortunately, I was teaching a class, so I didn't get to watch. 
Um, <laughs> Professor Venn. <laughs> uh, I know. Be quiet. And um, <laughs> yeah. All right. That explains that. I want to see Linux is definitely going to overtake Mac at some point, but only for the sake of common sense. Well, common sense and also Mac's getting out of the PC business. They, they've been slowly doing it for like the past four years. Then again, the same argument can be made for Microsoft, and they still have Microsoft getting into the, the hardware market. What are you talking <laughs> about? What bizarro universe do you live in? They, they're releasing new well, services. They're releasing the WinBooks or whatever, and and Windows 10 S. Yes, and Windows <laughs> RT. Wait, shut up! That never happens. <laughs> Don't talk about it. I kind of want an RT tablet, just like one of those collector things where I can like physically nail it to the wall and hang it. It'll be great. Um, it, it'd be more useful than the actual device itself. We yeah. should have put this next to the NVIDIA story, but we did want to give it a mention because it involves patents. Oh, yes. And one such patent has expired, namely S3TC. If you don't know what that is, well, then you haven't been playing games for very long, especially not on Linux, because S3TC is the S3 texture compression algorithm, which makes textures slightly smaller as the processor is reading them out of the hard drive or SSD and sending them to the GPU, which means it's much faster to get those bits across. And that's good. You want the games to be faster and just have the GPU do what it does best, which is render those checks, those textures, even if they're in a smaller file, they will still show all of the uh, nice little pixels. That is something you want, and there was something that was missing from Mesa. Uh, if you've tried to use an AMD or an Intel GPU on Linux to play any game, basically, released in the past few years, you will you will have had to install libtxc underscore dxcn, which is the sort of open source implementation of S3TC, uh, which most distros did not include by default because it very much infringed on that patent. So it was available, but it was always kind of a thing that couldn't be distributed by default. So now that the patent has expired, you can. And the, uh, uh, who was it, Matt Turner, submitted a patch to enable uh, DXTN's code on default Mesa out of the box. And that's good. That's actually really, really, really good. It means you won't have to worry about that one extra library when you just install Linux on your laptop or whatever. And you can just play games, even with the open source drivers, which is awesome. Just in time for the technology not to be relevant. <laughs> um, no, I, no, I'm glad I've been playing around with like the, the S3TC. I mean, that's, it's been available on Linux since forever. Yeah. I mean, we're talking like Unreal Tournament days on Linux. So that's a good thing. You can play with it. Now you can distribute it. It's in the Mesa. Uh, just an awesome project all on its own. And i um, interested to see where that goes. It's going to be a fun thing. Uh, I wanted to give this a mention, Pedro, because I think you'll agree with me on this. Google Plus is really cool as long as you don't tell anybody about it yeah no no keep the normies out of it right and if anybody ever asked you about google plus fight club it then is a ghost, ghost town. town no one's there no, it's a ghost town yeah, yeah. so and unless you're like wait a minute that's what everybody tells me <laughs> um, then we're 100 true just yeah either mm -hmm. way a few months back they forced the redesign on everyone with the old Google Plus, it had the Hangouts just built right in there, so I could yeah, absolutely... it was right on the side there. You could always see it. It, it was brilliant. I could justify because I always have had Google Plus open on a monitor to just converse back and forth, so I could justify having a web browser open and having Hangouts. It was all nice and neat, and Google looked at that, and they said, nope, we need to strip Google Plus for parts, so let's... Rip Hangouts on, then it was, well, you'd have a Hangouts tab, but it's not nicely integrated like it used to be. And I know somebody right now is screaming, but there's plugins for your browser. And I'm like, uh, I, I think our theory, I, I had this conversation with, he's like, have you tried? My biggest issue with a plugin, outside of having a browser open, 
for a chat application, might as well just do it in Electron, um, <laughs> was currently right now, like most times, this is a very special use case for a very special little man like me. Uh, Chrome, Chrome Beta, and Chromium, all three are going to be open. That's just starting this box every morning. And that plugin, pants on heads, retarded. You can't, there's no way to train it. It just lights up everything as soon as I get a message. So I'm having to close all these notifications all the time. It was driving me up the wall. And it's like, well, why don't you use Vivaldi? Again, I'm not running a web browser just to have Hangouts open. So yeah. I went back to something I hadn't used in a long time, since billions of years ago in the future's past. That was Pigeon. You might have remembered it uh, back with the old Hotness game. Remember that? Did, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. He is, uh, Pigeon is a character in Super Tux Cart. So I found this, man. And lo and behold, it works. There is a plug out. A plug out. Ooh. <laughs> a plug out. Yes. Yeah. Show title. <laughs> Bringing it. Um, Hangouts plug in for Lib Purple. Uh, it just works. You build it. Uh, you just. What I think it was a Git repo, wasn't it? Um, oh, they have a. Do they have a PPA? Well, they actually probably have the packet. No, that's the compiling. You just the, those are just the. Uh, yeah, it was just to make make install, and yep. there, there there was nothing to it except except this this is like the most um, one one of the most janky things I've done in a long time was literally using the network sniffer built into Chrome to s sniff out my OAuth. So I can log in. You have to do that. <laughs> it takes you when you, when you go to like, how do I get this? It opens up a YouTube video. It's like, all right, listen, <laughs> this is a bit of a roundabout way to do this, but it works. And once you, once you do it, I was like, oh, okay. All right. That's what I, once I knew what I needed, went in there, put it in, installed it. And uh, you have all your hangouts with pigeon little footprint now it's like but it doesn't do video it's like i don't use hangouts for video i use it it's my text chat man yeah that's so, most of everyone's text chat who is in that ghost town of a social network well it's uh, the uh, text chat and it also supports group chats unlike because i know someone's like well you know you can just the x xmpp protocol mm -hmm. you can just log into that with your google credentials but you don't get group chats or anything like that yeah so and this one uh this isn't exactly a new plugin it's based on the old um lib hangups uh plugin for pigeon which didn't work very well but they got in and it's actually not github it's available on bitbucket mm. once you once you build it it's uh yeah it it works and I, for one, use the stupid plugin. Well, I don't use the stupid plugin. I use the slightly less stupid plugin because there are two available. I'm not kidding. There are two plugins for Hangouts available. One actually creates like this whole. It puts literally puts pop ups on your desktop, which is annoying. And the other one just gives you the tray icon that you can use like Pigeon would. But yes, you, you're still technically running Chrome in the background. My default <laughs> pigeon has a plugin enabled that does the desktop pop-up notifications. Uh, it, it's not a, it's not an option built into pigeon. I had to Google it to get rid of the damn <laughs> thing because it's a plugin. Ooh, yeah. that made me a little stabby. But I used a, just a teeny tiny plugin that just makes the um, the tray icon, and you can disable the notifications. Just a matter of right clicking and disabling it. Hmm. It's not uh, it's not labeled as notifications. Uh, it's labeled as something else because Google likes to hide their stuff under clever names. Not really. But right. yeah, no, it, uh, yeah, it's, if you don't like the idea of having Chrome open in the background and I'm right with you there, I've had Chrome memory leak twice on me. And the first time I still only had eight gigs of RAM on this box. So every, all, just all of a sudden I started to hear my hard drive because I have my swap partition on the hard drive. I started to hear the hard drives going crazy. What are you doing? Oh, you're swapping. Why are you swapping? Chrome. Freaking Chrome. If you're going to go for maximum slowness, you, you need to put your swap partition on a USB drive. 
It's not slowness. It's an alarm, an audible alarm. If I hear my hard drive go crazy, I know that I'm swapping. I know there's a memory leak. Unless you have your headphones on and you're playing a game. Hey, yeah, that's next story. Um, <laughs> VPaint just kicked in, yo, man. Uh, we we're kind of looking at this. Uh, Nori knows how to art, doesn't mm-hmm. she? Yes, she does. Very much so. And this is the thing, man. I mean, Boris Dalstein is creating the next gen graphics design. Into I know. Oh, we've heard this story before. However, uh, this is guy doesn't he currently work at uh, Pixar? So kind of knows what he's doing. He's got a little Patreon because he wants to bring this business to the next level. And it's next gen technology to make it easier for artists to create, you know, 2D hand drawn animations, graphic, all the stuff Linux needs. And I, yes, I know there are other projects, but VPaint, um, vpaint.org, 1.6, it's out. Mm-hmm. It's a thing. Dude's got a Patreon. He wants a little support. And hey, man, we rely on that like other people. So maybe you want to kick him a few shekels over there. The animation's your thing. And these types of projects, something in your wheelhouse. Uh, it's not packaged for Linux. Uh, there is a 64-bit binary where you can mm-hmm. build it yourself. You took it for a spin, right? Uh, just a teeny tiny spin. I basically just downloaded the binary, schmod plus exit. And yeah, it starts. Uh, it also does the, if you're trying to draw a shape, uh, even with just the mouse, it'll try and correct the shape that you are trying to draw. It'll sort of do some predictive uh drawing as you are giving it suggestions and i guess that's good because if you are well it's good for a complete narb like me uh who's not exactly an artsy person and just wants to take it for a spin but if you are an artsy person and you're being very deliberate with the shape that you're trying to take that may get annoying and i didn't dig around the option menu the options menus all that much, but there's bound to be an option to disable like the predictive stuff. There has to be, please. Probably should be. It's a neat project. We wanted to give them a mention. Uh, well, mm-hmm. him a mention to continue doing work like that because as we've all learned over the past, past five years, day jobs plus this, this is a lot of work. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> maybe you'd like to kick in, support the show, and get some cool rewards in return we have a couple of ways you can do that oh yes you can go to linuxgamecast.com you hit the support button and you'll get a whole page of ways to support us you get the patreons you get the amazon affiliate links for four different regions so chances are most of you listening to this right now will be covered there's an amazon wish list if you don't want to you know give us some wet stinkies you can buy us some stuff directly there's paypal donato buttons and of course those magic internet monies but if you are going to support this train wreck what we call a midweek linux news show we do some wacky stuff man we just got finished oh, playing yes, some we do. Light last night patreon.com for a slash linux gamecast and you'll be able to get all the things we do there are currently a few uh patreon only posts including a really really terrible video of me reviewing a not so very good laptop uh so if you want to see that particular train wreck I, why you would i don't know but hey maybe it's your thing just kick us a few shackles uh you'll get much more than that much more um entertaining content than that for sure wait a minute wait wait, 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 wait. no no you need to hold up man are you we got we got to work for this yeah oh man yes so i mean you can't really go out in the street well you can go out in the street (laughs) and ask people for money but most people just give you the what what? unfortunately you see a lot of people doing that on patreon they're like yeah what's (laughs) What's that uh oh yeah don't worry guys i'm getting around to the and another cool thing you're gonna get access to is discord this is where the misfits, including we include ourselves in that group, mm-hmm. hang out the other six days of the week. They get live audio streams. They get an option, especially in the after shows and on the live, to come in, chat with us, and all that other nonsense. We thank you a lot. And yeah, all we're asking, four quarters a week, you know, four bucks a month, 16 quarters a month, man. If you've been thinking about it, hooks up. It's brilliant. It keeps us ad free and uh, helps pay our bills. 
It's neat, and uh, we like doing this. We hope you enjoy it. Now, back to that tantalizing, tantalizing. See, I think I can get away with that and just say I'm <laughs> it. Um Time for a sli- tantalizing slice of pie. Now, what do we ha- oh, stop it. No. Um, I, I'm trying to figure out what this is on this week's uh, slice of pie. Is that like a diseased Oreo? Uh, I think it's an Oreo cake with either Skittles or just the non uh, thing M and M's, just it, the flat ones. It, it's the I think M and M's, but you got to throw you know, their QA department. They throw out all the W's. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's see. What do we have coming up this week? Uh, read only Raspberry Pi, man. Oh, yes. And this is probably something you've done yourself. If you've ever tried to use your Raspberry Pi as like a kiosk to drive a display with just a very simple application and have it say, play a game on your bar. Just have it on the corner there. There you go. People just come into your bar. They drop a quarter in. They play your game. But you don't want them messing around with your Pi install. So chances are you've probably already Googled how to make your Pi read only almost well this is what this project is all about uh you can download the read only raspbian um stretch light uh iso it gives you they actually give you all of the uh necessary bits that you need to change to after you've done all the customization after you've installed everything you want after you've set everything the way you want it to work run that script it will be read only unless you go in with pseudo permissions and you mess around with more stuff. And that is really neat. Yeah, man. I, I think anybody who's thinking about I'm going to make, because listen, the Raspberry Pi, the Pi platform in general, and if you're one, two, three, whatever, or, you know, mm-hmm. the Raz W, um, <laughs> you probably have thought or have already done an Internet of Things, whatever with it. It's been one yeah. of your projects. And I think anything you're going to have facing the internet, uh, yeah, should be read only. Um, That's just good practice nowadays. It's good practice, man. And back back in the dark ages, we used to have some servers that would just boot off CD. Mm-hmm. I mean, you couldn't do anything. Yeah, do <laughs> it's a live session. It's read only. And it's basically all you could do. Um, it's good to see stuff like that. And it's security, but... That's not uh, as secure as what these lot are up to. Oh, oh. Hey, man, uh, booga booga, government's out to get you. Now you, too, can uh, do... uh, Help the NSA get your fingerprints? Listen, if you have some duct tape and a Galaxy 8, you can make your own iPhone. Uh, Just not the tin, because I get rid of the fingerprint scanner, even though it was a neat feature. Build your own fingerprint reader yes this is actually a thing and you can do it for under 160 wet stinky american caches all the project stuff set together the raspi reader um biometrics man that's the thing uh i don't know how i feel about this man Uh, it's i mean in a way it's kind of neat uh i was sort of disappointed when i read this story because as we know uh, there are quite a few laptops nowadays that have fingerprint readers built into them and if you try to install Linux on it, that fingerprint reader is a dud because you won't be able to get it to work. Um, so when I saw this, I thought, oh, someone actually developed an open source fingerprint reader driver that works with the Raspberry Pi. That's neat. No, they just made a really clever use of some cameras and a few other components, which admittedly, it's very, 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 very clever uh, to the point where they can actually... Uh, work around the, wait, you know, falsified wait, um, wait, wait, fingerprints. Wait. Okay, that if I, I've walked into, so, go away, Ed. Um, <laughs> that, 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 that's a sketchy looking box. I love the project, but if I walked into somebody's house and they had a box like that, it's like, nope, I'm out of here. Uh, <laughs> that's a 3D printed uh, box. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> but yeah, they actually did. The, it's the thing that sort of made this article for me was. Yeah, they have a way of figuring out which fingerprints are real and which have been falsified. So if you if you're trying if you're trying like different um, ways of using fake fingerprints like latex or the silver coated uh, what have yous, all of that wood glue even 
all of those were they tested them and they didn't work. The the uh, the little sensor was able to pick out the difference. So good on them. Remember, kids, if you have bolt cutters, all fingerprints are real. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I am just saying it makes it easier to get through the knuckle joint because, you know, the tendons are hard to separate. <laughs> yes, Ben, we get it. <laughs> We're already demonetized. You don't need to hammer it home. It's just a pro tip. Um, <laughs> hey, if you would like to help us demonetize ourselves further by sending in some questionable content, you can by heading over to LinuxGameCast.com. Hitting that contact button, uh, we've updated it, so we have a couple of oh, yes. options now. You can do LGC Weekly, Weekly Daily Wednesdays, or if you're trying to send us some review copies, you can do that. Or other, that's better used for asking about relationship advice on the Saturday show. Jordan, mm -hmm. we'll get back to you on that, but we definitely that's all, Jordan. like chatting in your direction. So you can um, tell us what we're doing wrong. We That's our favorite, or maybe... Yeah. Maybe we, we kind of messed up, got something right, and that's a good <laughs> idea. Or if you have some ideas for the show, something we should do, something we should stop doing, or you know of a cool project, be like, hey, man, maybe you guys should talk about this or spotlight this and let the world know about it. We've been known to do crazier things. What do we have coming mm -hmm. up first? Well, uh, up first, we have Tech Zero or Tech Zero, however you want to spell it. And he's actually talking about the Slim Book review, uh, what I did not too long ago, which was, well, I was disappointed at that laptop and I think it showed. So, but he actually came back and said, it's neat to see uh, GNU slash Linux distros officially distributed OEM like that. But I think I'll stick to my Asus ZenBook running Mint XFT4. That said, I'd be interested in seeing how a standard user would react to it. Probably someone that's not really uh, dedicated to Windows, but hasn't ever gotten into Linux distros for one reason or another. I don't care for KDE, but I could see it appealing to a standard user. It's very clearly targeted at appealing to MacBook users. That's not exactly the standard user you're talking about, so even then I fail to see the appeal of the Slim Book. Well, well the I see the appeal is, of the Slim Book the problem, as somewhat... The problem is is if you're going to appeal to Mac users, <laughs> you need to have the same build quality as a Mac. You can rightfully say a lot of nasty things about Mac, and I'll back you up 100%. But when it comes to the build quality of a MacBook, I mean, outside of the touch bar, that thing's stupid. That's asking. <laughs> that was really stupid. That, that, that's a special one right there. I mean, that's short bus engineering. Um, outside of that, man... They're built really well. Mm -hmm. And of course, yes, see, you can send us some feedback because I know you're that one person that bought one and it exploded and killed your dog. <laughs> I know. I was there, man. We were playing Sonic the Hedgehog earlier. Um, yeah, man, that that's a thing. Uh, I, I agree with Pedro. Just like what you showed on that Slim book, not unfairly tearing it apart or anything. Just like, hey, man, it's got some build quality issues. Aside from anything else, it's got some build quality issues, and it's hard to get past that for me personally. Before I it was like, oh, but take a look at what's inside. And I was like, it's a Linux laptop, Brad. Been yeah. there, done that. I have t shirts. Yeah. All right. You, you can't, you, you, that's another thing Apple does is like, let's repackage the same thing and like put another number on it. And, okay. Yeah, but if you repackage something hard enough for a long, long time, you get really good at it. <laughs> you do, but um, another piece of feedback um, from Yabo on the oh, same yes. topic. Uh, we had a bunch of feedback from this. Uh, he says, I might as well share that I like these kinds of videos and do not mind seeing more of you guys ever come, a couch, come across some interesting <laughs> hardware to share. We have some more hardware to share coming oh, yes. up. I actually have a video file I didn't get to download this morning, but I'll be taking a look at that tomorrow and begin my editing process. Also, I'll never understand the power button location. We're talking getting in that Thank laptop, you. and that was the upper upper right-hand corner, right? Yeah. Okay. It's usually where the delete key on a regular laptop. All right. I guess it's fine if you have to hold down the power button, turn it off. If that's Is that the case? Can you Do you just boop the button, or do you have to extend boop? Mm -hmm. You have to, you still need to do the extend boop for like three or four seconds. 
to power flush uh, the laptop. But no, that was a really, really stupid decision on the part of Slimbook. I said that, and I will reiterate it as much as I have to. That keyboard was the single worst part of that laptop. I will excuse the light bleed uh, along the screen edges because it was a review unit and had seen a lot of hands. I will excuse all of that. That keyboard has no excuse. The keys are huge. There's enough space in between each individual key that you could lose your dog in it. And the stupid freaking power buttons on the top right of the keyboard. Stop doing that. But Pedro, it has a Linux sticker on it, and you're saying negative things about it. Quit hurting the Linux community. You should praise undeserved... Um... <laughs> Throw undeserved praise at it. No, 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 I should not, no. because... Wait, yes, wait. we need uh, Linux built in or pre-installed so, in so are you, are all the you laptops. Try, wait a minute. Are you trying to say you did an actual review of a product instead of a Linux puff piece? Yes, I threw my honest opinion out there on the internet about that laptop. It wasn't positive, but hey, guess what? That's not a very we, good We apologize, laptop. ladies and gentlemen. We'll, we'll try to get, we'll, we'll try to make him, um, you know, one of us later on. We'll see if we can get him reprogrammed. <laughs> Coming in last and definitely least, um, Hypo. So it's kind of spooky, man. A little terrifying just in time for October. He says, man, I don't know. He's talking about me, I hope. Um, his voice kind of <laughs> weirds so, me yes. out. He says, I'm like Lunduke, but meaner and more aggressive. And, oh. Wait, you're like Lunduke? You? <laughs> We're the same person. Have you ever seen us? <laughs> yeah, no, never seen the two of you in a room together, that's for sure. Exactly. <laughs> um, listen, man. Um <laughs> Somebody weirds you out, like creeps me out, I like, like weirds you out. That that's a little like I don't know about it. Cause hey man, check this out. It's 2017, and in 2017, it's perfectly acceptable to be attracted to the voice of another man. Um, <laughs> unless, however, you're talking about Pedro and his voice, then you need yeah, to no, seek professional actually, help that immediately. Would be genuinely weird, right? <laughs> that, that 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 would be. Per petrifying, terrifying, horrifying, stupefying, mystifying, and other fyings yet to be discovered by humanity. <laughs> it would be some nightmare fuel, but I think that's going to do it, beautiful people. We've had fun. It's been another adventure in Linux land. Uh, we'll see you next week. But before we get out of here, um, if you want to get a hold to... Oh, jeez. Uh, there we go. That, <laughs> you know, oh, the my car, just follow that. <laughs> uh, I, 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 got, I got monitor blocked, man. Dang. Um, <laughs> at Ben Stone on Twitter. If you want to contact me there, follow me and all that. Follow us on YouTube, like uh, youtube.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. You can get alerts when we go live and all that other fun stuff there if you click on the ringing bell of doom. Where are you at, man? And I, right here, am at unaccounted for on Twitter or plus Peter Mateos on that uh, ghost town of a social network if for some reason you decide to go there just scream at me either one of those i will most definitely scream back at you and i'm always up for a good discussion on the interwebs for those like 10 to 20 minute stretches at work that i don't have all that much to do mm. yeah <laughs> well let's uh roll the credits for our patrons because and if you're listening to the audio version just close your eyes and imagine that your name is about to appear on the screen because it is it's definitely a thing. Oh uh, yeah, all those There's a whole executive lot of uh, lovely, lovely people throwing us money. Gorgeous, man. It's better than like this segment brought to you by Casper. It's a mattress. It came to my house. Um, it, it was really. You hard know to that set thing you five. did just there was unpaid advertising. <laughs> that was not unpaid advertising because was, you didn't let me finish. You interrupted cow. <laughs> It would have it would have been a funny bit, but I, I'm not going to finish it now. <laughs> yes, internet, blame me. Of course, it's easy. It's natural, actually. It's like a muscle re reflex. Even at work, it's starting to happen at work too. Oh. Just blame me for random things. It's it's probably not a coincidence, man. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs>